Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a good week so far. Hi Lubna, hi Shaylee, hi Jainil, good to see our members in the class. This is a members chat class, of course. Everybody is welcome to watch. To become a member of our channel, simply click the join button next to the subscribe button. In this class, we are looking at speaking part three, everyone, and this is continuing on the topic of yesterday's speaking part two. So we'll look at that. Uh, in the speaking section, there are three parts, and part two and three are strongly related to each other. Hi, Abhishek. Hi, Sammy. As usual, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, please visit us at gielthelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of HD videos, interactive courses, and practice exams to help you improve your English and your communication skills. Now, members, viewers, remember, this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. Okay, copy my intonation my pronunciation, pay attention to my use of grammar, uh, pay attention to my use of contractions like I've instead of I have, and copy it as well as possible. This video is recorded, so you can go back and review later and do some more repetition work as well. Of course, really pay attention to the content of the answers. You can find speaking partners on our websites as well. This is our academic website here with the blue background at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. You can try it for free by clicking that green button there. And this is our general IELTS portal with the green background. And you can click this big red button here to join our premium package. We help thousands of students every week succeed in their IELTS goals. We are a uh, an official British Council IELTS Registration Center in Saudi Arabia, and we are British certified British Council agents. So if you have questions, simply contact us through the website, or you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. So again, right now, speaking part Three for our members, then we'll have a reading class where everybody can join the chat coming up in about 90 minutes. And then for the 31st and the 1st of 2021, there's no classes for New Year's. So no classes tomorrow and the day after. However, we will have some extra classes on January 2nd and 3rd. We'll have two classes on each of those days. So we'll have some writing for our members and some reading and speaking for everyone. So make sure to um, take note of our schedule. It's also on our YouTube community board. Okay, so um, Nick Hill, Sammy, Abhishek, Janiel, Shaley, Lubna, and everybody else watching, here we go. So first, just a quick review of uh, speaking part two from yesterday where everybody was in that class. We'll go over the question, the answer. Pay attention to the content because we're going to use our answer uh, for part three, okay? Everybody's good to go, thumbs up, yeah? So here we go, let's look at the part two question first. Uh, this will warm up your speaking as well. So this was the question from yesterday. Talk about a dangerous object that you have used. You should say what it is and what it looks like. When did you use it? Why did you use it? Why is it dangerous? And how can you use it safely? Okay. So this was our answer. Let's get into it. Again, speak and repeat, everyone. So I have recently used a gas-powered lawnmower that is a very dangerous object if not used appropriately. My Red Toro mower has a self-drive system 
with a four stroke 140 cc diesel engine it has a square shaped body with a powerful rotating blade to cut all types of grass to an even height and a long handle which guides the mower's direction it weighs roughly 15 kilograms I had purchased my mower from Home Hardware about three years ago for roughly $500 because I had got tired of wasting too much time and energy cutting my front and backyard with a manual mower. So these days I actually really enjoy cutting the grass every other Saturday around 9 a.m. to a beautiful even height of about two and a half inches. Even though this machine is fun and efficient to use, if not used well, it can either seriously injure or even kill a person. The powerful blades can cut the feet and legs, it can sever arteries and lead to mortal injury. In addition, the loud engine with prolonged use can result in hearing damage. Not to mention flying debris can blind the user if they do not wear protective goggles. In fact, while cutting the grass last week, I lost control and ran over some pebbles on my driveway. The blade threw them all over the yard and one pebble chipped my car's windshield. Therefore, it is very important to take precautionary measures when using this lawnmower. I always wear my steel-toed boots to protect my toes. Also, I put in earplugs to safeguard my eardrums and I wear gloves so that I have a good grip on the handle and don't lose control. All right, now the examiner will say, all right, your two minutes uh, is up. I will stop you there. I will take back the question, the note paper, the pencil, and now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some questions in re uh, related to your response and some questions on a similar topic. And then what they do in the IELTS these days is while you're giving your part two response, they will think of a one or two questions that are directly connected to what you're saying. Okay, so they'll be very specific. Um, just to make sure that you're being original and you're not just memorizing responses and that you can uh, follow up on information. So. Instead of me giving you the questions, members, can you give me uh, a question that you think the examiner may ask you after you give them this information about your lawnmower and this dangerous object? So what kind of a question, what do you think uh, the examiner might write down on the piece of paper? And don't overcomplicate it. They're usually fairly logical questions. So they'll they'll think of a question that's fairly clear and that somebody would likely ask you uh, if you gave them this little speech, okay? So what do you think? What kind of a question might the examiner ask you? Let's, let's, let's give this over to you a little bit uh, to get you going on this. Nick Hill says, what are some other things that can be dangerous that you use in daily activity. I don't think so, Nick Hill, because that's a little bit general. That will probably be a part three question, but not a question that's directly related to your part two answer. Uh, Roshni says, how you felt after controlling the lawnmower? Do you mean, Roshni, like how you felt after losing control of the lawnmower? Hey, can you give me a little bit of clarity, Roshni? It's not bad. I think the question that you're thinking of might be, how did you feel after losing control? Yeah, that's what you're thinking. Yeah, that could be a good one. Sammy says, um, would you recommend others to use a similar kind of lawnmower? Yeah, that would be a good one, Sammy. Oh, it says, what should you do if you get wrong with dangerous objects? Okay, Ois, be specific, okay? So, Ois, something like this. Uh, what did you do uh, when you lost control of the lawnmower? Okay, that could be a good question. So, again, it, the question will be specific, okay? 
All right. Um, and what should you answer for this? So let's give the answer now. Um, what did you do? You lost control of the lawnmower last week. Okay. We gave that as an example. So what did you do when you lost control of the lawnmower last week? Okay. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. Okay. That would be a good one. So that would be something the examiner might write down based on um, what you're explaining. Okay. Nick Hill says, what are precautionary measures that you would suggest while using a lawnmower? Uh, Nick Hill, that's already included in the answer, so they won't ask you a question that you answered. Okay. All right. So this one right here. Okay. I immediately released the safety shut off lever and stopped the engine. Fortunately, the mower is designed with this safety feature in order to avoid more serious consequences. Okay. All right. Let's see what you wrote. Okay. Oh, it says, actually, when I lost control of the lawnmower, I got injured in my left leg. So I turned it off and went to the emergency room. Um, yeah, oh, it's careful not to change. So you have to remember what we said here. Okay. Uh, so we said, uh, in fact, while cutting the grass last week, I lost control and ran over some pebbles on my driveway. The blade threw them all over the yard and one pebble chipped my car's windshield. So I didn't injure my leg. I injured my car. Okay. Uh, so don't change the information, otherwise you will start losing marks for not being coherent, okay? Also, I took my car into the glass repair shop to fix the windshield, okay? All right, so you ha yeah, always you have to stay in the same context, okay? Otherwise, you're going to lose points for not being coherent, okay? It's kind of like task completion, okay? All right, uh, Sandy says, when I lost control over the lawnmower, my mother immediately gave me a first aid kit and took me to the hospital. Okay, same thing, Sammy, so make sure you pay attention to what you actually answered in part two. Roshni says, when I had lost control over the lawnmower, um, I kept in mind that I have to keep calm and cut off the power and leave the handle to avoid accidents. Okay, Roshni, that's good, all right? Okay, so again, repeat after me. What did you do when you lost control of the lawnmower last week? I immediately released the safety shutoff lever and stopped the engine. Fortunately, the mower is designed with this safety feature in order to avoid more serious consequences. Also, I took my car into the glass repair shop to fix the windshield, all right? Okay, good. Now, the examiner might ask you uh, one or two more questions, or they might just simply go right into part three, as long as they feel satisfied, and then they'll ask you some questions related to the topic of part two. So here, the examiner might say, uh, let's talk about dangerous objects. What are some common objects around the home which can be dangerous when used incorrectly? Okay. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. Now remember, members, to get those higher band scores, you want to make connections between your part two uh, ideas. Okay, so what are some common objects around the home 
which can be dangerous when used incorrectly. This is where your brainstorming in the one minute preparation time is very useful, okay? Is very useful. So remember it here. Okay. So when you're doing your planning in part two, that one minute, don't forget what you thought about. Okay. Those ideas are really useful. Uh, and maybe you remember some of those items from yesterday's class that we talked about. Okay. Let's see how many of you can recall that and use this. Uh, to give a good answer. Janiel says some home hardware electrical tools like uh, a drill, a grinder, and uh, other machinery like the lawnmower I just talked about in part two are uh, dangerous equipment that can uh, injure the operator when used inappropriately. Okay, Jainil, not bad. I made some changes so that your English becomes natural and accurate. When you have a chance, go back and review to see how I changed your response, okay? Uh, Shaley says, a uh, few objects like electrical switches, knives, gas stoves, when the gas is left on, can, pro can prove to be very dangerous if mishandled uh, or treated carelessly. Sammy says, the most common objects that can harm people in the kitchen are a blender, scissors, knife, a gas cylinder, and even a microwave oven. Last Friday, my wife's hand got burned while baking a cake. Yeah, okay, good, Sammy. So um, definitely, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so electrical devices such as blenders and kitchen robots can be dangerous um, because they have strong motors like the mower and they can injure uh, people's hands or body parts if used inappropriately. Also, other devices that generate a lot of heat, like an iron oven or a hair dryer. can uh, burn the operator. My wife burned her hand just last month with the iron. Okay, so there we go. And here I'm using uh, what I remember from my planning in part two. So here we go. Repeat after me. What are some common objects around the home which can be dangerous when used incorrectly? Electrical devices such as blenders and kitchen robots can be dangerous because they have strong motors like the mower and they can injure people's hands and body parts if used inappropriately. Notice how here I'm paraphrasing when they are not used correctly, incorrectly, if used inappropriately. Also, other devices that generate a lot of heat, like an iron oven or hair dryer, can burn the operator. My wife burned her hand just last month with the iron. Okay? And then, yeah, Nick Hill, you could mention sharp objects as well around the kitchen, like a knife, okay, or scissors. Good. So, well, maybe not good to cut ourselves, but good responses. All right, Nikhil says, there are some equipment such as a knife, a motorbike, a saw, 
which uh, I use to cut wooden blocks that can be dangerous. So uh, while using it, we should take precautions. Okay, uh, let's not go into that yet. Uh, here we go. Next question. Uh, which of these is most often leading to injuries? Or which of these most often leads to injuries? Okay. So here, don't overcomplicate. Give me a nice, simple answer. Okay. Which of these most often leads to injuries? Hmm. Please allow me a moment to think. Well, if I consider Okay, let's see what you come up with. All right. All right, well, there's my response. Let's see what you come up with and then we'll compare. Sammy says, in my opinion, gas cylinders and knives are the most dangerous, especially for kids. They must be very careful and kept away. Like the other day, my finger got cut with a knife while I was cutting an apple. Uh, Sammy, that definitely has to be an active sentence. Like the other day, I cut my finger while chopping an apple. Okay, you're doing it. I hate to say it. It's not the knife. It's you. You're using the knife, okay? So uh, we'd like to blame the knife, but it's not the knife, Sammy. You're the one cutting your finger. Just like when I cut cheese and I <laughs> cut my finger, it's me that's cutting my finger. So active sentence, okay? Uh, like the other day, I cut my finger uh, chopping an apple. Ois. I think the most dangerous of these are electrical devices, especially for kids. They can cause death due to uh, electrocution. Oh, it's, the word is electrocution. Okay. So the word you're looking for, OS, it's electrocution. Okay. That's what it looks like. Okay. To get zapped by electricity. All right. Electrocute. Electrocute, electrocution. Okay, always make sure you write it down when you hear a new word. Okay, electrocute, electrocution. Okay. Honey says, in my mind, anything which has a sharp blade can often lead to injuries. Honey, be more specific. Okay. Um, when you are asked for one item, which of these most often leads to injuries, focus on one item. Don't say, oh, there are many items. It's incoherent. It's kind of like I asked you about one item that often leads to injuries and you're telling me there are lots of items with sharp blades that lead to injuries. Maybe it's true. Maybe scissors often lead to injuries as well. Uh, but you want to just pick one and focus on it. So focus on the knife. Okay. All right. Uh, Nick Hill says, as I mentioned earlier, a knife or using an iron, uh, which are used for daily routines, could cause uh, danger most often while operating it. Last Thursday before going outside, I was ironing my t-shirt and I burnt myself a bit. Yeah, a small burn is scolded or I scalded myself a bit, okay? All right, 
Um, here we go. So repeat after me. Which of these most often leads to injuries? Um, please allow me a moment to think about that. Well, if I consider my own experiences, I think the item around the home that results most frequently to some harm uh, would have to be the chef's knife. I think that like myself, most people cut themselves every now and again in the kitchen with a knife while preparing food. Usually it's not too bad, but sometimes it's a real bleeder. Okay, a real bleeder is when you got a bit of blood going on, spraying and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, if that happens, elevate your finger above your heart, apply some pressure, stop the bleeding, put a bandage on it, and if you have to, go to the hospital and get some stitches. Okay, and if you get zapped by electricity, it's called electrocution. Keep that word in mind for future. Okay, next question. Good job so far, everyone. I think most of you identified the knife as a common cause of injury. Um, here we go. Where are common places people encounter lots of dangerous items? Again, give me a nice full sentence for this. Give me the answer, give me the explanation, and perhaps include an example as well. Smooth flowing. Someone just asked me in an email uh, yesterday. They said, uh, well, my teacher said in part three, you shouldn't include your own examples. Yeah, you shouldn't be like, well, for example, when I go to the, don't do that, okay? Or you shouldn't be like, well, for instance, uh, when my father, don't do that. But if you give a smooth example, like uh, I burnt my finger uh, yesterday with an iron, that's fine. Nobody's going to interrupt you, okay? Hi, Natalie. Okay, so where are common places people encounter Lots of dangerous items. All right, give me a full sentence answer. All right. Shaley says, I think the most risky place is the electrical board where the main power connection to the house is present. Mm, Shaley, I think you're being a bit too creative, although the IELTS examiner isn't going to judge you for that, but they might be a little bit like, really? Okay. Um, oh, it says the dangerous materials usually people put in the kitchen or store in the basement. Last month, I stored my gas barbecue in the basement, which the kids found, um, and they inhaled some of the gas and had some difficulty breathing. Hi, Byron. Honey says there are various places in the home where people encounter dangerous objects, but the kitchen contains the most dangerous objects. Uh, Roshni says the usual places individual in is encounter hazardous items are not only in the industries, but also in offices like cutters, blades, staplers, uh, since they are often used in work. Okay, Roshni, I like that. So um, in industrial work areas with heavy machinery, but also in the office. Um, yeah, even the printer, uh, the office printer can lead to some injuries, I've heard. Uh, again, they're not going to judge you, but think outside the box, right? So don't just think of the home. 
Think of the office, think of the workplace, think of the car. Sometimes in the car, there can be dangerous items as well. Uh, Nick Hill says, as far as I'm concerned, uh, in industries, in the workshop, there are many items such as welding machines and cutting machines, which can be quite dangerous for people's health. Yeah. How about hospitals? Anybody thought about hospitals? Hospitals have loads of uh, dangerous items as well. Lots of sharp objects and glass, right? So uh, Nick, in schools, even schools have lots of uh, dangerous objects as well, right? Yeah, Sammy, I see it. So Sammy says, yeah, I wrote that. So some of the general places people get injured are electrical transformers, uh, outdoors, firecrackers, and some surgical scissors at the hospital, right? Okay, right? So again, uh, be visual, think outside the box. It's really important to stay calm throughout your speaking interview so that you can maintain dynamic thinking, okay? So keep calm throughout your interview so that you can maintain dynamic thinking and give good answers, right? So schools, hospitals, industrial uh, places, factories. So where are common places people encounter lots of dangerous items? Repeat after me. Aside from the kitchen and the yard, as I had spoken about just now, uh, people also come across hazardous items at building sites where there are lots of heavy machinery used to construct buildings. That's why the workers must really uh, pay attention to um, wearing a variety of safety equipment. Okay. Here we go. Next question. How have technological advancements reduced the danger of certain tools? Okay. So the reason you always see the questions in pairs is because there's always a follow up here. Give me an answer, pay attention to the grammar. Have reduced, present perfect. Make sure to include present perfect at least twice in your answer, okay? So members here, when you're writing your answer, focus on including the present perfect in your answer two times, if possible, even three times, okay? So... Okay, so let's take a look at what you've come up with. And again, I'm really looking for that present perfect. I want to see if you can reflect the grammar of the questions. Okay, that's what I'm looking for here.
Okay. Let's see what you've come up with. I want to give you a chance to do this first. So OS says, uh, tech has helped much to contain uh, dangerous items uh, such as vehicles and safety equipment uh, for modern devices, um, which turn off when kids touch them. Okay, OS, you're on the right track. All right, I like how you use the present perfect there at least once. Try to use it twice, OS, when you hear it in the question. Okay, Sammy says, technological advancements have improved a lot in reducing injuries while using dangerous tools, like electrical items are covered with rubber and geyser items are coated with shock-free coating. Okay, good, Sammy. All right, good. Again, uh, use the present perfect, but nice uh, vocabulary there, Sammy. Nick Hill says, due to technological advancements, electrical appliances are much safer than before, such as an iron. Nowadays, electric irons, which have increased safety, uh, turn off after they get overheated to a certain temperature, regardless of uh, the clothing. Okay, Nick Hill, good. So again, present perfect once, you want to use it twice, all right? So here we go. How have technological advancements reduced the danger of certain tools? The development of technology has, uh, or sorry, the development of technology has really made a lot of equipment much safer than in the past. New innovations in engineering have decreased the chances of getting electrocuted or cut by machinery. Most electrical devices have safety shutoff functions that are triggered when the operator loses control of it uh, and or if there's a problem with the power supply. Okay, all right. And there I use the present perfect twice. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, and then the examiner might say, well, can you give a couple of examples, all right? And Nick Hill, you already gave the example of the iron, so you'd want to give a different example. Here I can make a connection to the mower because I talked about that in part two, right? So yes, uh, just like the safety uh, lever on my uh, Toro mower, which cut the engine when I lost control. Also, my table saw uh, will turn off if a person's hand gets close to the rotating blade because it has a moisture sensor built into it which can detect the sweat and oil on skin. Okay. So let's see what you come up with. Give me a nice example. Give me a couple examples, okay? Uh, so can you give a couple examples? Yes, just like the safety lever on my to Toro mower, which cut the engine when I lost control. Also, my table saw will turn off if a person gets close to the rotating blade because it has a moisture sensor built into it, which can detect the sweat and oil on skin. All right. I wonder if anybody's seen some of those. Those are some of the newer saws out there on the market that will actually turn off when you put your hand close to it. I don't recommend trying it, but it's a good safety feature. All right. Sammy says some examples are uh, in the car sensors that can tell the operator the vehicle is nearby. Um, and some helmets have a nice breathing gap. Okay, I'm not sure, Sammy, what you mean by the helmets, which have a breathing gap, so you'd have to explain that more. 
Janiel says, yes, certainly. These days I use a remote-controlled lawnmower for maintaining my garden so that I feel completely safe from um, the sharp blades. And also I use a robot vacuum cleaner, uh, which guarantees that I do not get electrocuted. Okay. Sure, Janiel. That works. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. Here we go. Uh, so you're doing a good job. You're moving along nicely. You're giving answers, explanations, and examples. And then the examiner says, okay, let's talk about user safety. What should people do before they use an object that is potentially dangerous? I bet I will get some really good answers for this one. Okay. So what should people do? This is a suggestion. So make sure that you're suggesting here. Now there are different ways to suggest should, ought to, must, need to. That's the kind of language that you're looking for here. So what should people do before they use an object that is potentially dangerous? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this question. Okay. Nick Hill, I see that's for the previous question. That's totally fine. Uh, Nick Hill for the previous question says other examples are like um, sensors on doors uh, to uh, avoid uh, um, injury uh, from closing on people and many machines in industry that do not uh, hurt the operator such as a CNC machine. Okay. All right, Nick Hill, a little bit more clarity. Closing door sensors in many machines. It's a bit awkward. It's like, what kind of closing doors are you talking about exactly? So you want to be a little bit clearer. All right. Okay. So again, what should people do before they use an object that is potentially dangerous? Give me a nice full sentence for this one. I'm going to do the same. All right, let's see what you've come up with. Shaley says people should first read the instruction manual and safety guidelines for using the object, plus wearing safety gloves and a shield, for instance, while working uh, with fire prone devices. Very nice, Shaley. That's the kind of answer we're looking for. Good job. Thumbs up. Uh, Sammy says individuals should take proper precautions, like I mentioned earlier, for the mower. Furthermore, people must read the precautionary notes in the user manual provided by the manufacturer. In this way, we can avoid a lot of injuries and safeguard our lives. Really nice answer, Sammy. Oa says individuals before using dangerous items should read the safety instructions about them. When I use my mower, I wear, wore my glasses, gloves, and steel-toed boots, and I read the user manual. Right, Oas? Very good. Okay, so definitely ought to read the user instructions carefully and maybe even watch 
instructional videos on YouTube before they start using a machine that is potentially dangerous for health. In this way, they know what to pay attention to and the correct operating procedure. I spent about three hours getting to know my Toro mower before I fired up the engine. Okay, so there I included a little bit of idiomatic language at the end as well. Honey says, before using a dangerous object like lawnmower, the operator should read the manual, which illustrates the correct usage of the machine and possible injuries, as well as the safety shutoff button. Yeah, safety shutoff or shut down button. Okay. Nickel says, to prevent people from getting hurt, they should first use safety gloves and read all the safety rules in the manual provided with the machine. While using a welding machine in the workshop, I wore all of the safety equipment and read the instructions. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. He'll never fire up a welding machine or a welder um, before you do that. It's a good idea. All right, members, fantastic job in the class today. Here's a follow-up question that you can try on your own. Why do some people not do this? What kinds of objects are commonly found around the home that helps people avoid injuries and where should people store objects like this? So those questions I will leave for you to try on your own. Practice them on the website with other students. Again, remember you can find speaking partners. This is for our members and everyone else. You can find speaking partners and practice your IELTS speaking for free at aehelp.com for academic IELTS. And gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Really nice, uh, strong finish, honey, Nick Hill, uh, Sammy, good job, everyone. I will be back in roughly 40 minutes with another reading practice and strategy coming from some of our newer exams that we're developing for 2021. Hopefully I will catch you all for that in half an hour. You're very welcome, everyone. See you soon. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Bye.